the 9th of April, 1940. Under the code name Operation Wesserabung, Nazi Germany invades Denmark and Norway. Strategically, Denmark's importance to Germany is as a staging area for operations in Norway, where the Third Reich seeks to secure naval bases, for use against the British fleet in the North Sea, and to guarantee vital iron ore shipments from neutral Sweden, on which Nazi Germany is dependent. While Norway surrenders to Germany only after two months on the 10th of June, 1940, invasion of Denmark lasts less than six hours, and is the shortest military campaign conducted by the Germans during the war. Though at the beginning, the Germans are eager to cultivate good relations with the population they perceive as fellow Aryans, by the fall of 1942, Danish attitude of passive resistance to all their German occupiers undergoes significant transformation, and the Danish resistance movement begins to gain support. In the summer of 1943, sabotage activities, reprisals, strikes, and street unrest across Denmark mount to a high pitch, and the Germans begin to rely on collaborating Danish informers. One of them will betray her own brother, husband, and close acquaintances. Her name is Greta Bartram. Maren Margareta Bartram, also known as Greta Bartram, was born on the 23rd of February 1924 in Aarhus, Denmark as the second of eight children. Her father, Niels Peter Christopher Bartram, was from southern Jutland, and since it was part of the German Empire from 1864 to 1920, he had therefore participated in World War I on the German side. Throughout the war, which began on the 28th of July 1914 and ended on the 11th of November 1918, Denmark was neutral. Though Greta's father, Niels Bartram, suffered from shell shock from the war and found it difficult to work, he managed to operate a small bicycle repair shop in Aarhus. Both Niels and his wife were members of the Communist Party of Denmark, as were the social circles of their family. In 1937, at the age of 13, Greta Bartram left school and worked for a couple of years at an institution for mentally disabled people in Braining, before finding work in Aarhus. When the Second World War began on the 1st of September 1939, Greta was 15 years old. On the 9th of April 1940, when Nazi Germany invaded Denmark, the Royal Danish Army put up scant resistance and the Royal Navy surrendered without firing a shot. In the beginning, whatever negative attitudes the Danes had about the Germans were expressed through passive resistance or giving them the cold shoulder rather than open defiance, armed resistance or sabotage. The Danes were given a degree of autonomy unheard of in any other German-occupied country in Europe. Although Germany dominated Danish foreign policy, the Germans permitted the Danish government complete autonomy in running domestic affairs, including maintaining control over the legal system and police forces. Throughout the occupation, the Danish government insisted there was no Jewish problem in Denmark. They were like all the other citizens of Denmark and would be treated no differently. In practice, this meant that Jews were not forced to wear the Yellow Star of David, were not segregated or isolated, and were not barred from restaurants, public spaces, schools, cinemas or theatres. Their property was not confiscated, and they were never dismissed from their jobs. Their movement was not restricted by day or night, and Jewish communal activities remained undisturbed, despite the presence of German troops. In the end, however, on the 28th of September 1943, the final order for deportation came to Copenhagen, but because an attaché for Nazi Germany in occupied Denmark, Georg Ferdinand Duckwitz, tipped off the Danes about the Germans' intended deportation of the Jewish population and arranged for their reception in Sweden, Danish resistance groups subsequently rescued 95% of Denmark's Jewish population. Between April 1940 and August 1943, Danish attitudes to all their German occupiers underwent significant transformation. German demands kept escalating until the Danes were no longer willing to compromise, to engage in the policy of negotiation, to rely only on passive resistance and the cold shoulder technique. By the fall of 1942, the Danish resistance movement began to gain support, and in the summer of 1943, sabotage activities, reprisals, strikes, and street unrest across Denmark mounted to a high pitch. In addition, the Danes were unhappy with the Germans because they were experiencing food shortages. On the 28th of August 1943, SS Obergruppenführer Dr. Werner Best informed the Danish government that it was declaring a state of emergency. Public gatherings of more than five persons were prohibited, 
as were strikes in financial support for strikers. An 8.30 p.m. curfew was imposed. Firearms and explosives were confiscated, press censorship was imposed, and Danish special tribunals for dealing with infringements of these prohibitions and regulations were established. Sabotage was to be punished by death. In 1942, when Greta started to inform on the members of the Danish resistance movement, she was only 18 years old. She was two years younger when she became pregnant, and in July 1941, she married Froda Thompson, who was four years her senior. Their relationship, which produced one son named Benny Gudmund, did not last long and ended in the summer of 1943. During the German occupation of Denmark, Greta Bartram's family, including her older brother Christian Bartram, became involved in the resistance. In September 1942, the Danish police put up a 1,000 Danish kroner reward for information regarding a sabotage fire in a shop in Fredericia Garda in Aarhus. Through her brother, who had obtained gasoline from her father's workshop for use in the arson, Greta learned who had been involved and gave the information to the police. The case was then forwarded to the German authorities. One of the four arsonists escaped, but on the 2nd of December 1942, the other three were sentenced to 10 years in prison, while Christian Bartram was sentenced to one year in prison. Thereafter, Greta Bartram participated in illegal activities with people involved with the resistance movement, and in March and April 1944, she became a permanent informer for the official secret police of Nazi Germany, the Gestapo in Aarhus, and according to her own statements, received 500 to 700 kroner a month for her work as an informer. She was given the name Tora. She later stated that she had originally contacted the Gestapo to obtain the release of her brother, Hans Andreas Bartram, who on the 25th of November 1943 had been sentenced to two years imprisonment in Germany. At the same time, she was informed that Axel Larsen, chairman of the Communist Party of Denmark, had passed on a lot of information during interrogation, which to her legitimized that she could also do the same. As a result, in the summer of 1944, the entire local leadership of the communist resistance was arrested on the basis of her information. However, resistance members still had high confidence in Bartram at that time, and in August 1944, she was sent to Copenhagen as a representative to establish new leadership for the resistance in Aarhus. The resistance subsequently became suspicious of her, so she arranged to be arrested and imprisoned in Froslev prison camp to allay this. However, this was not enough to remove the resistance movement's suspicions, and when they were certain of her guilt, they attempted to liquidate her on several occasions. On the 12th of December 1944, she was shot to the neck, but survived, as the weapon was of too small a caliber. She was hospitalized in Aarhus, but for security reasons was moved to the German hospital in Fredericia in Denmark, where she wrote a letter to her mother in which she also wrote, I am not made for poverty, and I will also show you that I will be rich one day. In Fredericia, she continued to work as an informer and provided information to the Gestapo. Though the local resistance movement had tracked her down and worked to have her liquidated, by the time they were ready for another attempt, she was no longer in Fredericia, as the Gestapo had sent her to Germany to recover. After recovering from the assassination attempt, Greta Bartram worked in the German town of Flensburg until March 1945, when she was employed by the Gestapo in Kolding, Denmark, where she remained until the German surrender. On the 5th of May 1945, when Denmark was officially free of German control, she was in the Gestapo headquarters in Esbjerg, where she was wounded after the resistance detonated bombs there. She recovered quickly and went by bicycle to Kolding to get help, but the Gestapo had already evacuated. She wanted to try to get out of the country disguised as a Red Cross sister, but the Germans did not help with this. Instead, she was given 25 extra cartridges for the pistol she had received when she was hired by the Gestapo in Kolding. She then fled to Breining, where she was arrested on the 10th of May 1945 by the local resistance movement. While Bartram was in Aarhus prison awaiting trial, the Aarhus newspaper reported in March 1946 that a 35-year-old married prison officer had been in a long-term love affair with Bartram. During the trial, it was revealed that Greta Bartram had informed on as many as 53 people, including her brother, husband, and close acquaintances. Of those, her information directly resulted in 15 being tortured during interrogation, as well as 35 being transported to Nazi concentration camps in Germany, where eight ultimately died or were reported missing. 
Bartram pleaded guilty to the majority of counts she faced and was sentenced to death on the 29th of October, 1946, by the Criminal Court of Aarhus, later affirmed by the High Court on the 22nd of February, 1947, and the Danish Supreme Court on the 4th of September the same year. During the hearing in the Supreme Court, three of the eleven judges wanted to impose life imprisonment, as they emphasized that she had not immediately seen the consequences of her actions as a person who had been subjected to torture, and that she was quite young at the time of the crime. Bartram stated that, if she had known that the case of the 1942 sabotage fire in a shop in Fredericia Garde in Aarhus would have been handed over to the German authorities, she would not have denounced the persons. However, on the same occasion, she also stated that she wanted to earn the money as her husband had suffered a serious accident at work in the summer of 1942, after which she spent a long time in hospital, which put the young family's finances under pressure. When they divorced in the following year, her son was put into foster care by her mother-in-law. During the trial, in 1946, a mental health report was prepared. The county doctor concluded that Bartram was gifted, but had to be described as a psychopath of the amoral type who is self-assertive and boastful and prone to imaginative and mendacious whims that are carried out without restraint. Moreover, she had to be considered a somewhat emotionless individual. When Bartram became aware of the declaration, she protested. What was particularly upsetting to her was the term emotionless. As with Anna Lund Lorenzen, the only other Danish woman sentenced to death after 1945 for war crimes, on the 9th of December 1947, her sentence was commuted to life imprisonment by Minister of Justice Niels Busch Janssen, who gave as his reasons Bartram's young age at the time that she had been raised in an anti-religious, communist, and materialistic spirit, and that she had had financial troubles. In the end, Bartram spent only 10 years in prison and was released on the 26th of October 1956. She then moved to Sweden, where she lived under her married name, Maren Margareta Thompson, though she had already divorced her husband in 1943. Greta spoke fluent Swedish with a Danish accent and lived with her Swedish friend from 1956. In the late 1960s, she was granted Swedish citizenship. In an interview in 2010, Bartram said she regretted her actions and a maturing process had taken place during the period she was in prison. Thus, when she moved to Sweden, she was a different person. When Bartram died on the 23rd of January 2017 in Norwegian Vesigebro, she was 92 years old. There were no tears shed for Greta Bartram. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.